Oliver J. Thomas, Professor of All Things Important, especially sleeping, would like to warn you that the following video contains sentiments personal only to the YouTuber in question and is in no way intended to cause any offence. Oliver thanks you. Okay, so part two of my really general mishy-mashy rant discussion video on sexual prejudice in fiction and in life. Okay, so just going back to the slut-shaming topic for a moment, because I was re-watching Sydney's video, and uh, something I want to say about uh, the idea of good versus bad characters in regards to sexual activity and how it's discussed in fiction, especially in young adult fiction. Um, Sydney makes the excellent point of how can you be expected to side with a protagonist or a good character if they are themselves promoting slut shaming and uh, uh, the putting down and, and disliking and um, bullying and all sorts of things of a character based on their sexual activity and nothing else. Nothing else. Note. If uh, a character dislikes somebody else due to the way they treat them or the way they treat other people, that is so much more understandable than a quote-unquote good character just standing back and dissing somebody else because of what they may or may not get up to in the bedroom. And that is something I can't stand, I can't stand behind that, and I can't fathom an author who thinks it's okay to construct a good character and give them those traits. Yes. It's fine to be flawed and to make human mistakes and to be a human being and have thoughts that aren't necessarily nice or good. Um, but when it's being presented as, and it's coming across as being the right way to think and to perceive people, that's when I take issue with it. And I'd be really interested to know if this is the case with a lot of um, contemporary, realistic YA fiction, because I've not read nearly as much of that, at least not in recent years. Um, I'm just curious to know the way in which sexual activity is often portrayed in, in those novels, because you would assume that there's a much wider um, uh, depiction of young people and different types of young people and their, their personality and their, their behaviour and things is more widespread and given a more um, uh, flavoursome feel and there's a more my a wider myriad of characters to deal with in contemporary realism because that just, it, it, it's just a subgenre that broadens the scope of things and you tend to have a bigger view of a bigger picture. Um, whereas you tend to get the same types of characters and personalities in um, paranormal fantasy YA stuff, unfortunately. And so that limits the way in which um, sexual activity is perceived and discussed. So I'm really curious as to how it's handled in contemporary realism. So if someone like Melissa or people who read a great deal of contemporary realism in YA, I would love for you guys to take part in this discussion and to give us your thoughts and your opinions and to, uh, yeah, just discuss and, and um, uh, convey how this sort of thing is handled in the kind of books you read. So please, please do leave video responses because I'm uber curious and I'm not nearly as informed or well read in that area, so I'd love to know. Okay, um, I just realised I'm not timing because I forgot to press the timer, so I'll start from now. Um, righto, so something I wanted to discuss because this really pertains to my own life and uh, it's kind of the counter-argument of slut-shaming is virgin-shaming and the notion that if you're a virgin after a certain age, that tends to be viewed as a bad thing or something to feel ashamed about. Now, this is a really interesting and, and tricky topic because it's sadly something that ver is very differing depending on which gender you're talking about. Films like comedy teen films such as Superbad or the American Pie series are really good examples of the fact that whether we like to admit it or not, our social consciousness as a culture, as a Western culture, is embedded with the notion that men, that guys, need to be A, more sexually active than girls, and B, lose their virginity earlier than girls. Why? I don't know. But it's embedded in there whether we like to admit it or not. I don't know why, I don't know how, and I wish we could get a drill and take it out of there. 
because this is just an assumption. No one ever seems to even have to voice it for it to be known. It's just this assumed thing and I don't know how it comes about but there it is and we've got all these comedy movies based around that concept and it's meant to be uber funny because these guys are trying to lose their virginity because you know otherwise they'll be losers and that's we're meant to laugh at that but at the same time recognize the reality of the situation and that is really upsetting <laughs> um because I don't know how it is that there seems to be some magical age limit into which you have to suddenly get sexually active and get on that and yet for girls the opposite seems to be true a lot of the time that if you're a certain age you probably shouldn't be sexing it up yet because otherwise you'll be termed a skank or a slut and uh, but so there's the innate hypocrisy that's in that argument because if guys are expected to be getting their good times on at a certain age, but girls aren't expected to be doing it at that same age. How is the good times meant to happen for the guys if the girls aren't meant to be engaging in it? What? Are, are all the guys just meant to go out and find themselves some hot older ladies with experience so they can, you know, check off their V-card or whatever bullshit term people use? I don't know! But that is, that seems to, be seems to be the reality. And I'm really hoping, I've never asked my circle of guy friends if this is actually the case, I'm a bit afraid to. But, yeah, there just seems to be something I noticed. It's especially prevalent in fiction. Especially in movies, even more so than, than books, i found. And the, the female side of this argument is something that really affects me, because in recent times we've had the huge hype well, uh, surrounding the Fifty Shades series, um, Fifty Shades of Grey in particular being the first book, and it's uh, been hyped and it's been this like big discussion between people as to whether or not it's a good thing or a bad thing regarding female sexuality and what it's presenting to readers and why it's so popular with certain age groups and all that kind of thing. And what I've taken away from this series, I've not, I've not read it and I don't really plan on it because it just seems stupid, um, and I'd rather m read my erotica online for free, but uh, one thing I've taken away from almost every single video and written review of this series that I have come across has been the notion that every single reader sees the character of Anastasia, the, the female protagonist, as being completely unrealistic because she is 21 and is a virgin. There are other elements I understand that um, people see as being unrealistic as well, like she's a technophobe, she hasn't had like a blackberry or something, or she hasn't been drunk at all. But all these things they base as being unrealistic and completely uncredible and unfounded and stupid, given her age, because that always seems to be the thing that they bring up. They're like, she's a college graduate, she's 21, but she hasn't had sex. And that is the thing that seems to stick with female readers in particular. Now this upsets me especially because it's one thing when it's guys making a criticism about female sexuality, but when it's females making a criticism, criticism about female sexuality, that's hurting me even more and makes me really worried. And every single review that I've read or watched where this topic, has, this particular thing has been raised, I've like shut it back. Like in, like I, I've felt a physical glitch of pain when I've, had, when I've heard this criticism. And okay, I don't mean to be judgmental towards the, those reviewers. That's your opinion, that was your stance, that was your reaction to that particular character trait, and that's completely fine. Why it upsets me, though, is because it brings about the notion of virgin shaming that takes place as well. We just can't make up our minds about what we want our females to be doing with their, their sexuality in, in, in life, can we? Because suddenly you've got an age record that is admittedly later, it seems, for girls than for guys, where they're meant to have suddenly magically lost their virginity too, otherwise they're perceived as being losers. And because they're unexperienced, therefore they have nothing to offer and, you know, they're less of a person, they're less of an adult because of this. And I take issue with that because I'm just going to be completely honest here, I've never been in a relationship and I'm 26. Do I feel shame about that? No. For myself, no, I do not. The only time I feel ashamed about it is when others make me feel as though I should be ashamed. And that's something I feel every single time I hear one of these reviews about Fifty Shades of Grey and about Anastasia, I immediately feel that, that shard of shame, like, digging into me, and that's why I feel so hurt when I hear these criticisms. And, yeah, all of a sudden it's the idea that you, you're at a certain age and you're sexually inexperienced, you're a loser. 
but if you're at a certain age when you're younger and you're sexually experienced, therefore you're a slut, you can't win, bitch! So what... I don't know. I just... I really felt I needed to bring this up because I was just wondering what people feel about the virgin shaming side of things as well and the hypocrisy that manages to come into that too because it's better to be a virgin if you're a girl but it's really uncool to be a virgin if you're a guy but then when you get older it's also uncool if you're still a virgin if you're a girl and that also brings into light the age old um, uh, argument between being a bachelor and being a spinster. I hate that word. If you're if you're a fan of Bridget Jones, you know that you need to use singleton because it's not gender specific. Um, the idea always that being a bachelor is cool and you're independent, and you're free, and you're doing what you want, and it's got inherently positive things connotations associated with it. Whereas if you're a spinster, you're you know you're repellent and disgusting and weird and isolated and you know it's got negative connotations. So the I that being the male and female positions of sexuality there is, like, again, just something that, that there's something wrong with our social subconscious people. There is something wrong when it comes to sex. There are issues. They should have been eradicated years ago somehow, but they're still in there, and I don't know if they'll ever go away. But the way in which we handle them, both in our interactions and our discussion in life, but especially in fiction, because that is an area where we have control. You're an author and you're crafting this story and these characters. You have a say in how things are come, come about, how things are discussed. And yet, so often, you see the same negative, really disappointing, upsetting, anger-inducing things from life follow over into fiction and not serve a purpose except to illustrate that this is what, you know, this is what it is and we haven't gotten rid of it yet. So I, I'm... I just there, there, there. I want to know what people's thoughts are. I'm trying to be as honest and direct as I can with my feelings on this, but I know I'm floating about everywhere. But I'm really curious as to what your thoughts are. If you've read the Fifty Shades of Grey, if, uh, the Fifty Shades series, um, do let me know what you think about the virgin shaming side of things that tends to come with um, uh, female characters being sexually inexperienced after a certain age. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just curious to see. I realise, I should say, I realise that the purpose of the character of Anastasia being sexually inexperienced was, of course, to contrast to, to Christian and the activities that they're going to get up to later. And that, again, that's an that's a age-old um, trope to use, the idea of the virgin going with the sexually experienced older guy and that kind of thing. We're used to that, but I'm just... It was more so I've been hurt by the response of reviewers and the fact that they've all felt the need to comment on this as being unrealistic and silly. So, yeah, I just really had to bring that up because it, it's been upsetting me. So that's my stuff. I really don't think I have anything else to say that is occurring to me right now, but please do feel free to um, partake in this discussion, and particularly contemporary realism YA readers, do let me know how the dealio is and what the situation is with your books, because I'm really curious. So that's all for now. Thank you so much, Sydney, for your original video. You are awesome, my friend, and goodbye, everybody.